In the last two lectures, we learned about while loop and do while loop. Now in this lecture, we are going to talk about for loop. So we have learned that in JavaScript, we have three loops, while loop, do while loop and for loop. We have already talked about while loop and do while loop in our previous lectures. Let's understand for loop in this lecture. And before we proceed further, I just want to mention here that the working of while loop and for loop is exactly same. The syntax is a bit different, but the working is almost same. Let's understand that with an example. So here I'm writing a while loop and what this while loop is doing is it is checking this condition. The value of I should be less than or equal to 10. So initial value of I is one. If the value of I is less than or equal to 10, it is going to log the value of I in the console and it is going to increment the value of I. So this while loop body will run as long as the value of I will be less than or equal to 10. So here you see when we are creating a while loop, we have three things. We have initialization. We have condition here. And then we have increment or decrement. Right. And all these three are required. We need a variable initialized with an initial value because we are going to use that variable in the condition of while loop. We need a condition so that when that condition returns true, the while loop body will be executed. And once that condition returns false, the loop should stop. And we need this increment decrement because if we don't change the value of the variable which we are using in the condition, then the loop might become an infinite loop. And we want to avoid that. That's why we have this increment or decrement part. Right? So we have three things. Initialization, condition and increment decrement. Now I mentioned that the working of for loop is very similar to while loop. The syntax is a bit different, but the working is almost similar. So let's write the same logic using for loop. So to use for loop, first we use for keyword followed by a set of parentheses. And after that, a set of curly braces. And inside these curly braces, we write the body of the for loop which we want to execute. So here I simply want to execute this console.log statement. I'll copy it. I'll paste it here. Okay. Now, inside this parenthesis of the for loop, we need to specify initialization, condition, and increment decrement. So all these three things we specify inside this parenthesis. So here we are going to create a variable. Let's call it maybe x for now. And let's set its initial value to 1. So in while loop, we have that initialization here. But in for loop, we specify the initialization inside the parenthesis. So initialization is the first part. Then we need to specify the condition. So after the initialization, we use a semicolon and then we write the condition. So here I will say x less than or equal to 10. So the same condition here I'm using variable i, but here I'm using variable x, but the condition is same. Okay, so we have initialization here. After that, after the semicolon, we have condition. And after that, again, we use a set of semicolon and we specify the increment decrement part. So here we want to increment the value of variable. So here we will say x plus plus. And here we are going to use the variable x. Okay. And this is how for loop looks. Now, if I comment this while loop and if I save the changes, you will see that the value of i from 1 to 10 has been logged here. So here we are not using the variable i, we are using variable x. So here we are creating a variable and initializing it with the value. Here we are writing the condition and here we have increment decrement. So in while we have to write it separately, but when we use for loop, we write it inside the parenthesis of the for loop at the same place. And this is how the for loop works. So as you can see, the working of for loop is similar to the working of while loop. Only the syntax is different. Now, these three segments, this initialization, condition and increment decrement, all these three are optional. If you want, you can do it here or you can do it anywhere. For example, let's say I want to use the same variable i, which I have created here inside this for loop. So I can simply omit this initialization instead of using this variable x which we are creating inside the for loop we will use this variable i which is already created and assigned with this initial value one so here i'll use i and here also i will change it to i 
and in the message also we will use i okay with this let's save the changes and the application should still be working and you can see it is logging values from 1 to 10 so here we have omitted the initialization part we have used semicolon and after that we have specified the condition in the same way you can also omit this increment decrement part you can directly write it inside the body of the for loop so that is also possible okay so now you will notice that this for loop is very similar to while loop so here we have condition the initialization is done before the loop and the increment is getting done inside the body of the loop so now this for loop it looks similar to while loop if i save the changes everything should still be working and here we can also remove this condition but when we remove this condition the loop will become an infinite loop okay so this condition is also optional but if you remove it you are making that loop an infinite loop all right so this is the basic concept related to this for loop using for loop also we can loop over a piece of code and execute it multiple times and the working of for loop is very similar to while loop the only difference is that the initialization condition and increment decrement we specify it inside the parenthesis of the for loop so for while loop we only specify the condition in the parenthesis of while loop but in for loop we specify initialization condition and increment decrement in the parenthesis all right let me go ahead and let me comment this for loop and let's say we have an array and i'll copy that array from above so i'll copy this user array and let's also learn how we can loop over an array using for loop so let's create this user array now let's go ahead and let's write for loop there i'm going to create a variable x or maybe i'll call it as i and here i'm going to assign it with the value zero because the index of the array starts from zero and here we want to access each element of this user array and we can access the element of the user array using its index so since the index of the element of an array starts from zero we are going to initialize this variable i with value zero then we are going to write the condition so condition should be as long as the value of i is less than the length of the array so for example here the length of the array is four so the maximum index here will be three the index of the last element here it will be three because index starts from zero so here we will say as long as this i is less than the length of the array for that we can say user dot length we want to execute that loop and then we are going to increment the value of i so for each iteration we are going to increment its value and then here we will write the console dot log statement and here we will log user of i so here i is going to store a value the initial value is zero so when we say user of i i is zero user of zero will return us this element john we are going to log it in the console and then the next loop will start in the next loop the value of i will be incremented to one in the body user of one will give us this value steve that steve we will log in the console so if i save the changes you will see that the elements of the array is logged in the console now here you need to remember that this initialization part of this for loop it is executed only once okay it does not get executed for each iteration it is executed only once when the for loop starts for the first time after that this code will not get executed then the condition is checked for each iteration okay and once the condition is checked and if the condition returns true the body of the for loop will be executed so just after checking the condition the body of the for loop will be executed and once the body of the for loop is executed then the increment decrement will happen so this is very important to understand the variable will be created only once during the first iteration of the loop and before executing the body of for loop the condition will be checked for each iteration if the condition returns true the body of the for loop will be executed and once the body of the for loop is executed after that only this increment or decrement will happen so in this example when we are using the for loop first this variable i will be created so here we are initializing this variable i with the value zero after that the condition will be checked so zero is less than user length 
user length is 4. So 0 is less than 4. The condition will return true. The body of this for loop will be executed and it will log the user at index 0. So it has logged John. And after the body is executed, the value of i will be incremented. So now the value of i will increment to 1. Again, the condition will be checked. Again, 1 is less than user length. So the condition will return true. The body will be executed and it will log user of 1. So user of 1, it is going to return Steve that has been logged here. Once the body is executed, again, the increment part will happen. So the value of i will increment to 2. And again, 2 is less than user length. So in this case also, the condition will return true. The body will be executed. User of 2 will be Mary. Mary will be logged in the console. And once the body is executed, again, the increment will happen. So now the value of i is 3. And 3 is less than user length. So again, condition will return true. Body will be executed. User of 3 will be logged which will be mark and then the value of i will be incremented to 4. Now 4 is not less than 4. So this condition will return false and the loop will stop. Okay. So this is all about for loop. I hope this lecture was useful for you to understand how for loop works and how you can use it in your program. So we have covered all the three loops which we have in JavaScript. We have covered while loop, do while loop and for loop. If you have any questions related to these loops, then feel free to ask it. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.